Point number three, the devil will try to take you out. You see, when God gives you a plan, and God brings it to pass, see, when that plan comes and it matures and it shows up and manifested in the natural, the enemy wants to kill you and kill your plan. You see, there were a lot of people that wanted to find Jesus, but there was also a Herod. And Herod came along like he was a worshiper. He came along and he wanted to come worship the sun. See, you've got to be careful because the devil goes about like a roaring lion. And he's seeking whom he may devour. You see, Herod was part of the whole clan. He wanted to get in there. God had to protect Herod, uh, protect Jesus from Herod. And the reason is, is because you've got to understand, the thief comes to steal. But Jesus came to give life. Life was laying on that sla- life was laying in that manger. Life was in that barn. And the thief came to kill, steal, and to destroy that life. Herod was ready to, to take him out. And your dreams that are on the inside of you, that you're impregnated by God, that God has put inside of you, that he's planted in you, some of you have let them go. Some of you have allowed the devil to steal it. See, the, the Bible says that the thief comes to steal. Here's what he comes to steal. The word. Don't you get it? The five things, the prince of priests, counselor, everlasting father. Oh, my Lord. Put it together. Come together with me. Put it together. What was Herod trying to steal? What was Herod trying to take out? He was trying to take out the grace of God in your life. Herod came to destroy the word, the word, the word. The devil comes to destroy the word. And the word became flesh and blood. See, you get a word, it impregnates you. And then you begin to birth that word. And you start going into labor pains. Some of you didn't get it. Some of you missed the point. Don't you understand, when you're in labor, when the pain gets worse, you're closest to birth. The more intense the pain, the closer you are to the birth. The closer the pains are together. The closer you are to the birth. Count it all joy. You missed it. That's okay. You can redeem. He said redeem the time for the days are evil. The devil might have thought he took you out. All he did was set you back a minute. But you can redeem the time. You can step back into the plan of God. You can step right back into it. You, shh, right there. There it is. Right There you are. Look, up there you are right there. Don't you let him take you out. Don't you let him take you under. You get up, walk on the waves. Get up and walk on the water. God has a plan. It's right there. It's. Because there's a plan that's of God. And when that plan is birthed on the inside of you, the Bible says that it'll overcome. You can overcome. You will. Don't you let the word of God be stolen out of you. He wants to cause the word to be ripped from your life. He wants to make the word of none effect. But it works no matter what anybody does. The word of God works no matter what anybody says. The word of God works no matter what happens. The word of God works no matter where you've been. The word of God works no matter where. There are those out there that will try to do you in. Some of the closest people in your life will try to do you in. They didn't even know they were being used by the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You thought you were fighting Jane. You thought you were fighting Susie. You thought you were fighting Mark. You weren't fighting Jane, Susie, or Mark. The devil came to rip your life apart because he wants to steal the word out of your life. Why does he want to steal the word out? He's not concerned about where you are. The devil's not concerned about where you are. He wasn't concerned about the Jesus in the manger. He was concerned about the one that was going to the cross. He knew that grace was going to hang on that tree. 
and that those five points, the counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, oh, everlasting father, was going to hang on that tree, those five marks in his body. That's why he tried to take him out when he was little. He tries to take us out in our infancy, when the dream is just beginning, when we're just babies in the womb. He wants to take us out then because he knows God has a plan, and that plan will come to pass. Surely it shall come to pass. And he's worried about where you're going to go. He's worried about what you're going to do. He's worried about what you're going to become. He's worried about what you're going to do for God. He's brought obstructions. And he's brought all, all kinds of occasion. He's brought all kinds of grievance to your life. He's brought all kinds of opportunities for you to be derailed. I want to speak to you today. I want you to remember that Jesus came. Jesus came. Jesus came that I might have life. He came to destroy the works of the devil. You see, if you're smart, you'll look for people who promote your prosperity. You look for the people who bring you the gifts. Don't just look for folks that'll talk. Bring, look for the ones that'll bring you the gifts. Look for those who are excited, who are excited about your That's arrival. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You've got to be careful because if you're waiting for man's approval, if you're waiting for man to tell you yes, if you're waiting for man to pat you on the back, if you're waiting for man to bring about what God planned in your life, you're going to be sadly disappointed because only God can bring about what God called you to do. It's a God plan, not a man plan. You don't need man's approval. You don't need man's recognition. You don't need man's pat on the back. Stop trying to get everybody to say you're all right and you're okay. Let God say you're all right and you're okay. Stop worrying about what everybody thinks about you, what they thought about you last week, whether they saw you or didn't see you. All you need is God's forgiveness. All you need is for God to look over you and change your life. The shepherds and the wise men, that's what you need. Real Christians are peaceful people. They look for peace. They're out to help people, not to tear people down. They're out to pick them up, not to shove them down. They're out to wipe them off, not to put dirt on them. Somebody ought to say amen. I'm preaching real, real good. We need to stop throwing dirt on each other. Church ought to be a place where every wounded soul can return. Where every hurt person can be, can be relieved and, and doctored their wounds. Where every hurting person can come and hear a word of encouragement and an uplifting thing to their soul. God, Jesus, the grace of God. Yet for God, where would I be? Oh, where would I be? I don't know about anybody else in this place, but I can tell you for this old boy, yet I was saved by grace. I don't know where I'd be today. I don't know what my mind would be like. I, don't, I can remember one time I tell you, I'll just tell you, I, I had this, this situation with a, with a girl I was dating. It got so serious with this girl that things really went awry, really, really bad. And we were about to be married. Weeks before we were going to get married, things went really, really bad. Two weeks before we were married, I called it off. Called it off, said, no, I can't do this. I'm so glad I did. Don't get me wrong. I'm really glad I did. Because I could have married the wrong one, and I'm glad I didn't marry the wrong one. Where would I be without the Lord? Where would I be? See, sometimes... Yeah, it'd just be better to listen to God. When God births it in your spirit, it'll come to pass. But I remember after it was all over with and all the news and all the shattered dreams and all the potential problems and all the situation with the church, I was fired from the church. Just challenges upon challenges and financial issues upon financial issues and discouragement upon discouragement. I, I really tell you, I tell you, I don't know what happened, but I remember one day I was taking a shower. I remember crumpling on the ground. Please don't think bad of me when I tell you this story. But I remember I crumpled on the ground, and I tell you that day I thought I was going to lose my mind. I was a young man, and my future looked like it was over. Everything looked like it had gone wrong. I laid on the floor of that shower with the water beating on me, tears rolling out of my eyes. God, can you help? And he reached out. Yeah. 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 He reached his hand. Yeah. And he touched me. Yeah. The grace of God. Folks, I tell you, no matter where you've been. See, you look up here and you see Pastor Stephen. You say, my God, that's a man of God up there. He never has any problems. I just don't let my problems have me. 
It's not that I don't have problems. I just don't let my problems have me. I've got grace. I've got the hand of God. God loves me. Point four. You, you need to protect your promise. You need to protect your promise. Once you give birth to your promise, you have to keep it until it's fully formed. I heard something from Zig Ziglar one time. He said this. He said, you have get up goals and you have give up goals. You have get up goals and you have give up goals. Get up goals are goals you tell everybody. No, give up goals are goals you tell everybody. Get up goals are, to, are goals you tell nobody. Give up goals are goals you tell everybody. Get up goals are goals you tell nobody. You see, sometimes people ain't going to understand what God birthed in you. Sometimes what's inside of you and what God told you ain't going to make no sense to nobody, not even your own family. It don't even make sense to your own household. It doesn't make sense to anybody you tell because God impregnated you with something that's controversial and different and outside of the norm. He put you in a position to take you a place nobody's ever been for you to be different, for you to be something, for you to be used in a way nobody else has ever been used before. God wants to use you in a way nobody's ever been used. And there's things that you've got to keep buried on the inside. You need to be quiet. They took Jesus to a faraway place and they hid him until we see him again at the temple. Why did they do that? Because in, they didn't want the, the promise of God. Hide it. When God says, by Jesus stripes you, he'll put it inside and hide it in there. And when the doctor says, it's not working out, thy word, it's going to be all right. See, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. I'm going to overcome. Put those promises on the inside. I'll stand upon my watch. And I will set me upon my tower. And I will watch to see what he will say yes, yes. unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down. Make it plain on tables that he that runs with it can read it and run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So many visions have been thwarted because we didn't get them on our time. It took 33 years for Jesus to stand on a pulpit and die on a cross for my sins. Didn't happen when he was in the manger. The stories had to become flesh. We had to see him. We had to behold his glory. And if you don't get the point that sometimes you guys have wanted something today when God had it for tomorrow. You got to hide the vision. You got to protect the plan. You got to put it in your, you got to get, if it's really from God, it's not something you just share with everybody. Not something you just put on Facebook. Don't show me your Facebook plan. I don't want to see it because I know that ain't from God. Because if all you want to do is run off at the mouth and tell everybody what God's going to do with you, you ain't got a plan yet. You ain't heard from God. Because when you really heard from God, you don't throw it out on Facebook. You don't go run your mouth, go tell everybody. Because there's stuff you got to work out. God will tell you things to do that you couldn't do on your own. You don't go run off at the mouth. It's bigger than you. If it's a plan from God, it'll always be bigger than your ability to do it. You got to stop trying to keep up with everybody. The reason the man with one talent failed. Remember he gave ten, five, and one? Because the one with one talent. Look it, look it up. Look it up. The man with one talent was concerned about what the others did with their talent. And he judged his talent by their success. God didn't call you to have my success. He called you to have your success. Stop trying to be what everybody else is. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Let the Jones go on. Doesn't matter. They ain't been where you've been. They had not gone through what you've gone through. They haven't experienced what you've experienced. They don't have to come back like you've got to come back. You may not understand this, but I tell you right now, if there's ever been a comeback story, I'm it. I'm just telling you right now. If there was a moment of give up, I'm the example of come back. Because I could have gave up, but I didn't give up. I came back. I stood up when I should have fell down. I, lay, I didn't lay down when I got up. I got up. 
you got to get up and stop worrying about what every one of the things that's killing us. We fail to realize that all we need is God. All we need is God. I don't need friends. I don't need people. I don't need money. I need God. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. I need God because he'll bring a conclusion to the matter. I have not seen. Ear hath not heard what God has in store. Not what man has in store, but what God has in store. Stop worrying about whether man will promote you. Stop worrying about whether man will give it to you. Stop worrying about whether man recognizes you. The only one that can give you eye had not seen and ear had not heard. Because it's in the heart of God. It's not in the heart of a man. Oh. Oh, I just said something right there. Don't judge your effectiveness by somebody else's. Just stay steady. Your talents aren't somebody else's talents. Stay steady. Don't you let the devil rock you off your stand. Don't you let him pull you down off of what you believe. Don't you let him move you. I shall be like a tree planted by the waters. And I shall not. <laughs> Having done all to stand. You may have fallen before. You might have slipped up before. You might have made the mistake one time before. You might have stepped out of bounds one time before. But this ain't then. This is now. This is your moment to shine. This is your moment to step back in. This is your moment to walk in the plan of God. This is your moment to take back what the devil stole. This is your moment to recover all. Somebody yell out, I'm going to recover all. Well, I wish somebody get that. I wish somebody get that this morning. Man, I'm telling you, out of the fire of my heart, I'm telling you. Some of you in this room, listen to me. The devil has stolen things from you. He didn't have the right to steal it. The devil took stuff from you. He didn't have the right to take it. The devil has abused you. He didn't have the right to abuse you. The Bible says that you can have it all back. Take back what the devil's told. Take it back. I kind of have a make him pay attitude. I kind of do. I realize I've missed it sometimes in my life. I, I recently had an experience. I tell you, I, I, we would be so much further along. And the devil has beat me up like you can't believe. You did this. You did this. You should have done this. If you had done this and didn't do that. If you would have just done this. If you didn't do that. And then you wouldn't be in this mess. If you'd have just done this and you'd have done that. I finally got to the point where I said, you need to shut up and leave me alone. Because nothing I've done will ever prohibit what God has already done. Nothing I could do will ever stop what God has already done. I got this. I got this. I got this. This wasn't based on what I could do. It wasn't based on what I did. It wasn't based, it isn't based on what I'm going to do. I've got this. I've got the mighty God, the counselor, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. I got the grace of God. I've got it in my heart. Jesus has come that he can wipe away my sins and forgive me from all my unrighteousness. He can make things new. He said he makes, behold, all things become new. That's not just yesterday. That wasn't when I walked the aisle. That was every time I said, Jesus, I ask you right now, whatever I did to mess up, God, will you make it right? Did you know God said he'll make it right? And my God shall supply all my need. I wish somebody get what I'm talking about. You can start from right now and become everything God called you to be. You can start from right now. Tell me what the difference would be between somebody who knew God uh -huh. and failed uh -huh. and a person who walked in here and never knew God. That's right. We would tell the person who never knew God. If you ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. And you can start from today. God has a brand new life for you, and you can walk on with God. And yet we have people who walk back through the doors who failed in life, and we can't say that to them. I tell you, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't love the person who just got saved any more than he loves the person who needs to rededicate. Preaching real good. Jesus shows the most important value we can have in number five. 
The last point I want you to get today, the five points of light. The last one, be still, know that he's God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Listen for the still, small voice. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you'll acknowledge me in all your ways, I'll direct your path. Hide it. Let your dream become reality. Number five, we must be about our Father's business. When Jesus was in the temple, they were looking for him, and then they came back and found him. He said, you don't understand, my time is not yet. I must be about my Father's business. Jesus is showing us the most important value we can have. That this season is a season that reminds us of our primary purpose. It's not about gifts. It's not about new cars. It's not about new houses. It's not about new shoes. It's not about new coffee makers. Wrist watches. That our primary purpose in life is to be a worshiper. God created you and I to be worshipers. Our life was created. God gave you life to be a worshiper. (laughs) And they worshiped him to be a worshiper. True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The core of our life is worship. God loving the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. Getting lost in the presence of God. Your root will not keep, and you will be uprooted unless you're rooted in worship. Many people leave, leave churches, and they leave the house of God today. It's so prominent. If we don't park you the right way, and if it's not convenient enough, if the hot water's not right in the bathroom, if the chairs don't work right, if somebody says the wrong words to you, if you get the wrong letter in the mail, when you're rooted in worship, it won't matter what happens around you. You must be rooted in worship. A house must be rooted in worship. I love this last scripture I'm going to read to you because I think it's the most telling scripture of all. Solomon was one of the wisest men you could ever have met. Many scriptures are attributed to him. and He studied after everything you could study. He studied worldly affairs, studied politics. He studied science of that day. He studied everything you could study. And he concluded... His writings in Ecclesiastes like this. I oftentimes use this at funerals because I want people to understand that at the end of your life, it won't matter what you drove. It won't matter how many people knew you on a football field. All that's good, but it won't matter. Because you can't take any of that with you. None of that will be there when you go. It won't matter what anybody did to you. It won't matter the experiences of your life, all the things that you've allowed to hinder you and hurt you and hold you back. You know, I, I tell you right now, let me tell you, I, Amy and I, we have come to the point in our Christian experience, because as pastors, you'll go through some stuff, man. You will go through some stuff. My name's on that sign. I can't just walk out. Everybody else can. It's really the truth. And I've been at this long enough to know some folks will be with you today, and they'll be against you tomorrow. Amen. You, you better come to the realistic. Don't, if you don't go, if you don't start, if you don't get anything I said today, you better realize something. Some folks that are cheering you on today may be cursing you tomorrow. It's the truth. It's the truth. Don't you? You got to get caught up in God. What I've come to realize is I can't let none of that live in me. I can't let none of that stay. I can't leave none of those hurts in there. I can't let any of that be there. I can't. I've got to let that stuff go. No matter what anybody does to me, I've got to let that go because the only one that's hurt by that is me, not them. It will destroy me, not them. It'll only hurt me. It'll only destroy me. i got to let that stuff go. I can't keep the hurt. I've got to let it go. And I've got to give it to God. I've got to give it to the Lord. I've got to refuse it in my life. I've got to decide I will not toy with that in my mind one more day. I will not let you put that in my mind one more day. I cast down every vain imagination that is. I will not. And then it comes up, you know, because right along you'll have experiences. And it, all of us have been hurt. Who's been hurt in here? Just raise your hand. Anybody been hurt? Really hurt. Really, really hurt. And really, really to quit and hurt. I drove up in front of the church one time in my car. Tears coming down my face. I looked at my wife. I said, I can't go in there today. She said, you got to go. I said, I can't do it. I cannot go in there today. I can't face those people. It was agreement Sunday. 
I was going to come lay hands on cars. <laughs> this is true. And I sat out in the car for about 30 minutes. Service started with me in the car out front crying. I can't go in there, Amy. And she's telling me, you've got to go in there. You're the pastor. <laughs> you have got to go in there. I can't do it. I can't face them people. Been, it was, see, I came to the point where I realized the devil will take that. And he'll wreak havoc in my life if I let him hold that. I, I learned that day to let that go. And I'll tell you this. If you're going to move on and go on to greener pastures and walk in the greatest thing God ever wants for your life, you've got to forget what they did to you. You've got to let go. had a woman one time. I don't mean to belabor the point. But, you know, I just sense in my heart today one of the biggest things. See, you've got to understand, I've talked to you about grace. And grace will enable you to let this thing go. It's not that you have to forget it. You'll never forget it. You'll never forget it. But you don't have to let that thing plague you. You don't have to play with it in your mind. You don't have to keep absorbing it and keep the emotion. See, you have an emotional attachment to it. When it comes up, you want to feel it. You've got to take those feelings away. You've got to rip away the feelings from it. You've got to say, I'm not going to feel that anymore. I decided I'm not going to feel that anymore. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. I'm not going to allow that thing to, dim to dominate my life. People have gone into alcoholism. They've gone into all kinds of things because the devil took some moment in their life. And he keeps replaying it over and over and over. You've got to take the grace of God. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Counselor. God wants to counsel you. He wants to be your everlasting Father. The only one who has remained with me. I lost my mom. Loved her to death. Till she went on to be with the Lord. Best friends with my father. I love that man. But the only one who remains with me today. Is my heavenly father. He'll never leave me. And he will never forsake me. There is a loving Father who will love you today. He'll love you tomorrow. He loved you yesterday. And he will love you for eternity. Amen. Remember now the Lord, thy creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When you'll say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light or the moon and the stars be not darkened. It's disgusting your eyes. As you get older, your eyes get dimmer. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, that's your teeth, and the strong men shall bow themselves, the grinders shall cease because they're few, teeth and muscles, those that look out the windows be darkened, the doors shall be shut in the streets, the sound of the grinders is low, that's your ears. He shall rise up at the voice of a bird, you'll wake up early in the morning, can't sleep. How many know when you get older you stop sleeping good? Anybody want to? I'm 47. I'm already experiencing it. I mean, you go to bed and you're up. The people, you know, the first light, the first bird, chirp, chirp, you're up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you used to sleep. Think about your baby when it was born. You didn't sleep all the time. Then you get older and now you can't sleep. Amen. The vocal cords no longer used to, are what they are. It goes on to say, and he shall rise up the voice of the bird and the daughters of the music. That's your vocal cords shall be brought low. Also when you'll be afraid of things that are high. Fears, the things that are in the way when you're walking and you might trip over something and break your hip. And the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshoppers shall be a burden. Your strength will be gone. You know, I mean, even the grasshoppers will be bending over to get a little grasshopper. I mean, this is, this is, this is his conclusion of the matter. This is the wisest man that ever lived. He's concluding for us the whole matter of life. He's telling us what really matters. He investigated it all. He says, this is what's going to happen. The pitchers will be broken. The, in other words, you, you won't be able to hold your water anymore. The wheel will be bro broken at the cistern. Then the dust shall be to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even the words of truth. The words of the wise was the goads, and the nails fastened to the masters of assembly, which were given to one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There's no end. 
Education only goes so far. And making books, there's no so don't put your trust in that. Books. I mean, you should. And much study is weariness of flesh. Anybody experience that? Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. That word fear there means worship. Here's the conclusion. Nothing wrong with books. Nothing wrong with all that we can do in life. But worship God. Keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. You were created to worship. And in the end, all you will have left is your worship. All you will have left is what you stored up. Christmas is about the grace of God for you to be everything God called you to be. For you to have every dream God called you to have. For you to fulfill every plan. For you to walk in the prosperity of God. But why? For the worship of God. So that God can be magnified and glorified by your life. So that your life can mean something. When this is over for me, when this is over, I want two things. One, I want here for people to have been ministered to by my life. And two, I want to get to heaven and I want God to say, well done. <laughs> if I did that, if the answer in heaven is well done, well done, Steve. Well done, Steve. Well done, Stephen. You did a good job. You weren't perfect, but you served me and you worshipped me. And you fulfilled the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether good or whether evil.